All right, today is day number two of the Santa train. I cannot go day number one because I had work, but this could potentially be my last ever handheld video. So I'm gonna start testing some new styles, try to do more of a narrative approach. But yeah, here we go. We're gonna go chase the Santa train in Lincoln. See you there. So like I said, this is potentially my last chase with the handheld camera because sometime in Christmas, I'd like to get a tripod going. But yeah, we're in Lincoln after a interesting drive where my engine overheated a couple times. We've finally arrived, and man, is it looking pretty. Also, the 1590 was making a bunch of weird hissing sounds, so I think that was in a weird state of operation, but overall, it was 101.2 and 105. Now, as we wait here, we see the elusive 1186 just waiting on the side for it to eventually operate or be scrapped as the railroad doesn't have much interest in the Alcos anymore but well times have changed and they use the EMDs since they're MU compatible which means they can operate together with only one engineer but yeah it's still sad I wish I got to see this engine but last time on that the train should be coming in any second from the right here yep you can see it right now and I will leave because the horn is about to start off See ya. That was the Nathan K3 LA of 101.2, an engine formerly from LTE, aka Larry's Truck and Electric. The K3 LA came with the engine, unfortunately. Well, I say unfortunately because I'm not the biggest fan of it, but it is still a fairly pretty horn. 101.2 is an EMD SW1000, same with 105. I believe the 101.2 was BNSF Heritage, and 105 I think came from somewhere in Mississippi or Michigan like that. But yeah, they're engines from the 70s, and they replaced the Alcos on their respective railroads. 101.2 went in Pisaki, 105 for the Hobo. Yeah, the, the Alcos needed to retire, sadly, but yeah. Anyway, I'll shut up now because I have nothing else to say. The train should be coming in any second, so I'll shut up.
this shot right here, I actually wanted to replicate the first time I heard the Lincoln Monster, aka the Leslie S15 1186 from a DVD. So this was a little weird, but okay, I can't really talk much. The train is coming in. Alright, so apologies about my fast speaking. I just wanted to get the train and the shot and the horn and all that stuff. But yeah, here comes the train again. It won't be honking for a good second, so I'll be able to talk about it. The train is a double header, a very rare thing in the hobo. And there are some RDCs, retired of course, but there's four of them. And two X Erie MU cars which is why I highlighted the importance of the MU earlier for MU compatibility because there's also Erie MUs but all those cars are retired they don't run on their own power anymore they run on these locomotives right here and well they have some interesting horns on some of them like you'll see one later in the video but one actually was brought back to service I didn't even realize that the very last RDC went out of service because it was shaking too much but yeah here comes the train now I'll shut up because it's about to start off Oh yeah, here's a cool shot I wanted to try out. I just put my camera on the ground with a pole holding it for support, but this is kind of something I'm looking to try with my tripod. Just a flat shot with the train going by, because it is a shot I like, but, well, give me your feedback. In fact, give me the feedback and the voiceover too. This is my first voiceover, so it's not gonna be great, but yeah, this is a cool shot where you can see all the equipment go by, and well, that's about as much I can really say for now. I'll have some more stuff to talk about later though, I promise.
this is a golf course and it started at a golf course so yeah the hobo likes going to golf courses i guess but yeah it is a bit quirky but then again what can you expect from a railroad that literally uses a railroad crossing in a golf course yeah oh hey speak of the devil there's the train right there yeah as i was saying with the rdc that last one was in service for a good amount of this year and then it got yoinked out because it was shaking too much but now it's back in service and i didn't even notice that or even know that until i saw the horn which was the rs31 which has gotten some use in recent years but not too much it's not a pretty horn after all but yeah, here comes the train it should be pulling up now and well see you in the flip side And we've gotten to the flip side. The train should be heading back with the MU leading. A whistle on top is actually something that I'd like to talk about once it goes by. The, it's a very interesting horn to have on the hobo, especially a cab car. They're very rare horns, or whistles I should say, but they're meant to sound like whistles, but they're really meant for diesels. So if that gives you any idea of what it is, then well, yeah. But. Anyway, it should be incoming now, and you'll see it in just a second with its newer ditch lights from like 2019 or something like that. But yeah, it's fairly nice looking lights and a very nice overall contest. So finally you get to hear the whistle and you get to see my finger right there, but yeah, it's a very nice whistle, so I'll shut up for you to listen to it.
For those who might not know what that whistle is, it is a Hancock 4700. It is an old steam-esque whistle made for diesel locomotives back in like the 50s or 40s. I can't exactly tell you when this whistle was made. I do know that this 4700 is one of two with this one being the newer one. The other Hancock Air whistle is on my channel, but it was bought back in the 80s along with the Nathan M3 this railroad has on their one of their cabooses, the Leo's Party caboose. So it is one of the original horns. In fact, the 105 has one of the original Leslie S3Ls that this railroad bought, which was for 1008. But yeah, this is a very old, very rare whistle, so it is very neat to be able to hear one of these girls in operation on such a frequent basis, if you will. Because this is the only whistle I can think of that has been consistently operating for the whole time. It has not been changed other than like one time where it had an actual proper air horn, but that was quickly taken off after like a couple years or so but yeah the train should be coming up any second now and i'll shut up so that you can watch it go across the bridge Okay, so it took a lot longer to get to the bridge than I would have liked, but it felt even longer considering it was like 30 degrees or something like that. Plus with the elevation, it made it brutal. But yeah, the, as you can see, the train goes very slow, but it, it should be ringing its bell now. Although speaking of waiting a while, it took a lot longer than I would have liked for the horn to start going, or whistle, sorry. The whistle to start going, cause well, really slow train. But yeah, here it comes, and you should be able to hear the whistle any second now.
So while we wait for the train, I would like to mention that little rotating thing I did at the end of the shot is something I'm going to start doing a lot more. I've started doing that since 958. You can see that at the very end of the video, but it'll be something I do to either wrap up a video or wrap up certain clips. It's just something I really like to do. Like you saw it with the first time you heard the 4700 go by, and I don't think this shot has it. It might, but I don't think it does. Anyway, speaking of the 4700, you should be able to hear it any minute now. Again, it's going to be very slow because the train's very slow, but surprisingly, it's not because of the traffic. You'll start seeing trucks piling up and whatnot, so traffic was actually fairly reasonable today. Granted, it's really cold, and the Kankamangas Highway is not going to be slam-packed with people, but yeah, anyway, the whistle should be coming on fairly soon now, so I'll let you listen to that. So the train's coming in now. I wanted to be up at the station, but I couldn't get up there since the train beat me to it. Also, if it felt like you had to wait a bit for the whistle to start going in the last shot, trust me when I say I cut down a significant amount of time. Straight up minutes were chopped off because I was just waiting for it to come through. Yeah, this hobby tends to have a lot of waiting, but frankly it's worth it because I get to hear all these cool horns. And the bell you hear right now. Anyway, the train's coming in now back to the station for its wait for a couple hours so that it can start its next journey, and once I finish up this shot, I go get some nachos at the Woodstock Brewery. So, sayonara for now.
So the railroad isn't entirely done with trains yet as it's about to start another excursion called the Journey to the North Pole. It is something I wanted to chase for a bit before coming home, but as you'll see at the next shot, that's about as much as I could get for footage. But the horn's about to go. In fact, it blew earlier for the normal Christmas train, but you'll hear in just a second. The K3LA is pretty loud, but you won't hear that in this shot. You'll hear it later.
So this is what I was talking about with the whole, it is going to be louder later. You can hear the boom and echo of the K3LA here. You could hear the echo in the last shot, but not really the boom. But I'll shut up because I don't have a lot of time. The train is going to be passing through literally any second. So that's going to make a wrap for the hobo chases this year. It was a very interesting ride. This is also my first time narrating, so I apologize if the narration kind of sucks, but it won't in the future. Also, speaking of things in the future, I will get that tripod, hopefully before my next chase, which will be about Christmas time. Well, when I get my tripod, it'll be Christmas time, but then after that, I might do like a New Year's Conway thing, because the hobo is going to be down. But I'll be back for 2024. I'll see if I can catch any equipment moves or whatnot. But I will chase the hobo next year. And so for that, I want to thank all of y'all for sticking around. My channel is almost monetized, so I'm trying to keep your attention a little longer so I can get those watch hours to be entirely blunt with you. After all, this is going to be like a second job to me. However, it is uh, something I'm very passionate about. And I do look for feedback. I will try to make better content. Like I said, the tripod will be coming in. That'll be coming for my camera. This is actually my last, like, phone video, too, by the way. I only use my phone because the audio quality. So once I get that mic in, hopefully it should make for much better content. Also, I'll be editing on my PC, most likely. Or if not, I'll just import it to my phone and edit here. But, yeah, I expect much better quality in the future. And I appreciate you guys sticking around. I will probably have some content that will be like digital stuff or already existing content like I have on my shorts page. But yeah, I'll see you around.